Hey, this is Joe Hubbard from JoeHubbardBaseVideos.com coming at you today with another lesson. And this particular lesson is on cracking the Slominski code. So with that in mind, grab your base and let's get started. In this particular lesson, we're going to take a look at some exercises from the classical vernacular to see how some different interval structures can be used to form some interesting lines to improvise with over jazz harmonies. A popular book that jazz musicians have worked from exclusively over the years is The Thesaurus of Melodic Scales and Patterns by Nicholas Slominski. It literally contains millions of permutations based on the equal intervallic divisions of the 12-tone chromatic scale. Although this is a classical book, historically many jazz musicians, including John Coltrane, Pat Martino, Herbie Hancock, and Jaco Pastoris, have gleaned many ideas from this book and used them in a jazz context very successfully. One of the concepts that is used in jazz continually is the diminished eight note scale built with half step whole step or whole step half step. The half step whole step scale is used over the dominant seven flat nine chord and because of the prolific use of the dominant seventh chord in jazz, this scale is widely used. If we take some of Slominski's diminished patterns and harmonize them with jazz voicings over dominant seventh chords, we get a plethora of ideas that apply directly to playing over jazz tunes. Okay, the first thing that we want to do is take a look at the diminished scale built from the half step, whole step. So if we take a look at this, we've got half step, whole, half step, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, whole step. The scale is going to be that. Now, when figuring out any chord scale relationship, you want to be able to find the chord within the scale. So the chord is the uh, dominant seventh chord, so we've got the root, three, five, and flat seven. And then the notes in between are going to be the tensions, and this is going to give you flat nine, the sharp nine, sharp eleven, and thirteen. So this fits perfectly over a dominant seventh chord with a natural 13. Sometimes this would just be written as C13 flat nine. Okay, so let's look at this pattern that I've lifted directly from the Slominski book. And what we're doing is we are harmonizing the scale in diatonic thirds built in minor thirds. So I'm taking the interval of a major third and I'm building it in minor thirds ascending. So we go from C to E, E flat to G, F sharp to B flat, and then A to D flat. And then I'm going to do that again. We've got C to E, E flat to G, F sharp to B flat, and then A to D flat. And then what I'm going to be doing on the way back down is we're going to go diatonic seconds, but we are descending, and we're descending in minor thirds. So I'm going here to here. So I got C, D flat, A, B flat, F sharp, G, E flat, E, C, D flat, A, B flat, F sharp, G, E flat, E. And that's going to be our line. So one more time. Okay, now you try it. When harmonizing this line, the obvious choice would be a C7 flat 9 or a C13 flat 9. However, because the scale is symmetrical and is dividing the 12 tone scale into four equal parts, which are C, E flat, F sharp, and A. Any of these notes could be the root of a dominant seventh chord, and the line would still work perfectly over these four different chords.
The next Slominski pattern that we're going to take a look at is built on the intervallic structure of root 2, 3. And then what we're going to do with that structure is we're going to move it up in minor thirds. So if I start on C, I've got this. And then I move that up to E flat. Then I do it from F sharp. Then from A. That's moved up in minor thirds. And I've taken that structure of the root, second, third, and done that. Then I'm going to do that again up the octave. So I've got it from C. Then I move it to E flat. Then I move it to F sharp. And then I move it to A. And this is a great pattern, and it really outlines this cool diminished flavor. You'd hear players like John Coltrane, Michael Brecker, John Patitucci, and the rest using these type of digital patterns to play over changes. Now, when I start to come back down, it gets a little bit more complicated. But what we want to take a look at is the idea that we are now going to be superimposing this diminished seventh chord over the C7. And that's going to be a half step up from the root. So it's going to be a D flat diminished seven. So what happens when I do that, I get the flat nine, I get the three, I get the five, and I get the flat seven of that dominant seventh chord in there. So we've got a pattern here that's based on these notes coupled with chromatic approach note combinations. So it's going to start off with a chromatic below into the flat nine. So I got C up to the D flat. Then I have a chromatic above and then below the flat seven. And then what happens is that I'm going to play a double chromatic back into the flat seven. This is very pattern based, this type of thing, and works very well on the fretboard. Is that that's a six note pattern One, two, three, four, five, six. And this note here is going to be the first note of my double chromatic from below into the flat seven. It sounds more confusing than it is because for the next pattern, I'm going to shift down and I'm going to start on A. And it's going to be exactly that same type of pattern, except starting here from A. So if you analyze it, we have a chromatic below into the flat seven. Then I've got above and below. Now going into the fifth. And then again, I have that note that I end on, which is the first note of the double chromatic from below into the next note that we have. Now I shift down here. Now I shift down to the E flat. Now I shift down to the C, which is approaching the flat nine. Then down to the A, which is approaching the flat seven. Then down to the F sharp, which is approaching the fifth. Then down to the E flat, which is approaching the third. So let me just go through that really slowly one more time. You just think of this as a six note pattern, and I'm actually starting on the C here, then the A, then the F sharp. I'm just moving in minor thirds, then the C, then the A, then the F sharp, and then the E flat, and then I'm back home. So one more time real slow.
Although the classical composer Rimsky-Korsakov claimed that he was the originator of the diminished eight-note scale, many other classical composers, such as Stravinsky and Shostakovich, use these ideas with impunity. A prerequisite when learning to play jazz is continual growth. There's always progress to be made, so learn to embrace this concept on your musical journey. Practicing should be a daily process, and a great way to help you jumpstart this is by getting over to my website, www.joehubbardbassvideos.com, and signing up for a program that will suit you best and start implementing your continual improvement today. Also, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more free bass lessons, and feel free to check me out on Facebook and Twitter as well. Until the next lesson, practice smart, work hard, and play creatively. <laughs>